discretion is advised. Tonight, police are looking for someone who, who police say stole from a woman multiple times while she was in the house. And what's worse, investigators say the victim is a 91-year-old woman with dementia. New at 6, KCTV5's Amy Anderson has more of what that teen's now accused of. It started about a year ago. The young man offered to mow the victim's lawn. From that point on, her family says, he did everything he could to earn her trust. Tonight, he's accused of betraying it. Take a look at this in-home surveillance video. You can clearly see the young man in the woman's kitchen helping himself to her purse while keeping his eye on the unsuspecting homeowner. Who he distracts her by getting her to look out the window, saying, you know, there's my sister or here's my girlfriend. So she'll turn around and go look out the window. And that's when he is getting the purse, getting the, the billfold, getting whatever he can get. And he's accused of doing it multiple times over the last few weeks, making off with close to $1,000 in cash, mainly from 91-year-old Virginia Callahan's Social Security checks. It's money she needs to live on. She's an older lady and, you know, just trying to make friends, you know, and so she didn't realize what was happening. It's something the family says started happening nearly a year ago. First, it was an offer to mow the lawn. Then they say the young man showed up with a Valentine's Day card for Virginia, and then he started coming by to chat. He started out with uh, visiting, you know, he calls her grandma and always wants to uh, hug her and, you know, that kind of stuff to gain her confidence. And he did. Jake Scalf lives across the street from Virginia. It was just a couple of weeks ago he noticed an unfamiliar car with unfamiliar faces pull up to her house. Two men got out, two stayed in the car. He said they were inside for just a couple of minutes, then took off. It was alarming enough that I came over to check on Mrs. Callahan and I peeked through, the front door was open and I peeked through the screen and she was in the kitchen and didn't seem alarmed in any manner. She was standing at the kitchen sink, so I just went back to my yard work. Tonight, everyone here says they'll be watching over Virginia closely and hope that's the last time anyone betrays her. In Raytown, Amy Anderson. For trial for a South Florida woman accused of murdering a police officer, she claims self-defense. Seven's Vanessa Medina covering the case for us live from the Broward Courthouse in Fort Lauderdale. Vanessa? Well, according to prosecutors, Taniko Thompson pretended to be pregnant. She took leave from work. She told everyone that she was due any minute, but when her secret was about to come out, that's when she resorted to murder, according to police, murdering her boyfriend inside of his Pembroke Pines home. These are pictures of Taniko Thompson. She sent these to friends saying she was pregnant, even texting her friends details of her pregnancy. She tells her boyfriend, City of Miami police officer Carl Patrick, they were having a baby girl. They come up with a name. It's Victoria. They set up a room. They buy baby items. They get baby gifts. However, it's all a lie. Prosecutors say she had a hysterectomy almost 20 years prior, but continued the story. Tanika Thompson is not letting this get exposed. And it winds up with Carl Patrick being shot. In uniform, shot. And being left to die. Prosecutors say she shot Patrick in the arm, took his phone, and let him bleed to death. Then wrapped his body in comforters, then burned sage on top of the blankets. According to prosecutors, she left him there for several days while she went in and out of the house. She wrote a letter saying it was all an accident. But it's more. All the thermostats in the house, the air conditioning thermostats, are turned all the way down. There's fans set up in the bedroom blowing on the body to cool the air, to chill the air, to slow decompos decomposition of the body. Thompson didn't quite like the prosecutor's account during opening statements. Her defense attorney claims that morning on May 7, 2014, his client was defending herself. And I don't know if he was trying to intimidate her or whether or not he truly at that time was trying to kill her. 
but he pulls out his firearm and he sticks it right into her face. And it hits her in the mouth. Thompson claims they struggled and the gun went off. Her defense attorney claims DNA evidence proves she didn't shoot him. And even if she was wrong about faking the pregnancy and running up his credit card, she had a right to use self defense. So Thompson is charged with second degree murder. This trial is expected to last about two weeks. Court will reconvene tomorrow morning. Reporting live in Fort Lauderdale, Vanessa Medina, 7 News. Now at 632, a bold arm robbery at a Lakeland restaurant. A gunman hit his Zaxby's when all the workers were trying to get home. The crime happened at the restaurant on Highway 64. WMC Action News 5's Jerrica Phillips is live with how that gunman was able to get inside the store after it closed for the night. Jerrica. Well, good morning, Kim. You can just imagine how terrifying that was for these employees. A witness tells us that uh, the employee was taking out the trash here at Zaxby's when he was approached by an armed robber who forced his way inside the back door. Now, according to that witness, the robber both pistol whipped and shot the worker in the arm. Once inside, the uh, robber forced two other employees to unlock a manager's office where the money is stored. The robber was able to get away with at least two deposits from the business. There were approximately eight employees inside the restaurant at the time of the holdup. Now, a witness said the robber kept demanding money and held at least one other worker at gunpoint while others tried to keep him calm. His demeanor was just give me the money and nobody get, gets hurt. So he had the gun pointed to her neck directly towards her skull. And I just told him, look, man, we're going to get you this money. You don't have to worry about it. You know, just please don't shoot anyone. That's what I was saying. Please don't shoot nobody. Just a chilling situation for these Zaxby's employees. Now, this morning, the robber remains on the run. We are still working to learn more about that man. He was last seen with a low haircut. He had a hoodie on with a black T-shirt over his face. Of course, we are following developments in this breaking news. For now, reporting live, Jerrica Phillips, WMC Action News. Well, today is a step closer, closer to closure for the family of a mother and her three children found dead last night in Greenville. CBS North Carolina's Lauren Havlin has more this evening. Today, Greenville police were able to give a better idea of when 32-year-old Garlet Howard and her three children, ages 11, 7, and 6, were killed. Around 7 o'clock Tuesday evening, Greenville police responded to Howard's home. They went there after getting multiple calls from worried family members who live out of state. And those concerns were for the actual welfare of the children and the mother. And uh, they were such a nature that caused us to go and force entry into the home. Investigators found a stunning scene. Howard and her three little girls dead inside. Police say the two youngest girls' father is to bone Toon. Police tell CBS North Carolina they went searching for Toon and received information that he was in Richmond. Officers arrested him there around midnight. Toon was driving Howard's car. Detectives are confident from that interview that they have the person responsible for these murders and that he acted alone. But police are trying to pinpoint exactly when the horrific crimes were committed. Detectives are looking into the possibility that the victims uh, may have been killed several days prior to the discovery of their bodies. On Monday, someone from Howard's job called police, concerned she didn't show up for work. At that time, investigators say there was no indication Howard and her three children were in danger. But four weeks earlier, there were signs of trouble. Police responded to the home Toon shared with Howard. He apparently tried to kill himself. I really want just to be sorry for those, those four um, people that got killed. At this time, Toon faces one murder charge. Detectives are working to obtain three additional murder charges for the children. Toon will be back in North Carolina later this week. In Greenville, Lauren Havlin, CBS North Carolina.